So in this video, we're going to be talking about gravitational fields. So I'm going to start off by looking at force and field strength, then we're going to move on to look at potential energy and potential and doing work to move between places in a gravitational field. So first off, Newton's law of gravitation. So he proposed this law that the force between two objects is directly proportional to the product of their masses, so m and m, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the centres of mass. So that's a long and complicated way of saying this, that f, the force, is equal to minus gmm over r squared. Now, why is there a minus sign there? This is just convention. Attractive forces, which gravitational forces always are, are defined as a negative force, and repulsive forces are defined as being positive. So that's where this comes into it here. We'll look later on that we get rid of the minus sign most of the time, but anyway. So essentially what that's trying to explain is if you have this mass here, m, so your biggest mass is used by convention, the big m, and then you have this smaller mass with a small m, and r is the distance between these center of masses of the two objects. You never have objects that are occupy points, so you always talk about the center of mass. Okay, so let's move on to field strength. So field strength is essentially a way of comparing different objects and the fields that they have. So it's independent of the mass that's in the field, it's just about the object that's creating the field. So it's essentially the force experienced by a unit mass, or a mass of one kilogram, at a distance r from the center of mass of the big object creating the field m. So mathematically, that is done in this form here. So you've got the symbol for it, e, you've got your minus, you've got g, m, m over r squared. And just to draw your attention to this, g is, your, is the universal... constant. Ooh, that's gone a bit crazy. This is the universal constant. And so you'll see it in all of these different equations when you're dealing with gravity. It's not something that changes like the G on Earth, which is something different, but it's this constant in gravitation that always applies. So if you look here, you're drawing the field around an object. You notice these field lines are always pointing towards the object. Remember, it's an attractive force, so the field lines are always going towards the center. And again, R is measured from the center of mass of the object here. Now, just a side note here. When you're doing calculations in year 12 and the AS, you'll often use G is 9.81. Um, and this is like an acceleration, usually meters per second squared, or you can substitute as newtons per kilogram. So G, in this case, is the field strength of Earth. So you'll come across that quite a lot. So let's do some examples of these so you can see them at work. So we've got a question about field strength here. So Earth has mass 6.00 times 10 to the 4, and a radius of 6.371 times 10 to the 6 meters. So find the gravitational field strength on the surface of Earth. Now, first of all, when you're doing these questions, it's only ever interested in the magnitude. So when you're doing all of these calculations, you're going to see the minus signs that we talked about earlier to indicate it's an attractive force disappear. So in terms of calculating the field strength of Earth, we're going to use g m over r squared, so we're not going to have a minus sign in there. So let's do these the work, do the logic here. So g can be found from your formula sheet, and what you'll find is that it's 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And then we can substitute in our mass and the radius here, like so. And if we do this calculation, we come out with this long set of decimal places, which if we then give it to an appropriate number of significant figures, you're going to get 9.86 newtons per kilogram. So why three significant figures? We see this number here, 
three sig figs. This number here is three sig figs. This number here is four. So the smallest number we've got in our question is the three. So that's why we give our answer to three significant figures. Okay, let's do a four example. So force experienced by a satellite at an altitude of this. So first of all, we are once again we're only interested in the magnitude when we're looking at gravitational force, so the minus sign disappears. Other key thing, altitude isn't telling you the radius. So if we draw our planet here, so we've got Earth, and we're saying our satellite is somewhere up here, altitude is telling you this. So if you want r, you also need to be including the radius of your planet. So let's first of all calculate what r is. It's going to be the altitude, so 3.579. And then we need to add in the radius of Earth, which is from the previous part of the question. which gives you 1 meter. So this is the distance between the centers of mass of the object. So then if we want to calculate the force, let's give ourselves some space. So we've got force, again looking at magnitude, so we're not interested in the minus sign over r squared. So let's add in some numbers. So then we've got these numbers here. So if we do the calculation for this, let's just move those up. That's going to come out at 252 newtons, which is the correct number of significant figures in this case. If we look 3, 3, 3, and we, in the radius calculation we use 3 and 4, so 3 sig figs would be the appropriate answer to this question. Now, I've had some complaints about my handwriting, so if you want to see some neatly typed out versions of these calculations, these are the workings that, that you should have had in these calculations. Obviously, pause it if you want to take a look at those, but we are going to move on. So. The next thing to look at is potential energy. Now, if you want to know where the equations potential and potential energy come from in terms of deriving them from the force and field strength, there is a, another video you can look at on the channel, because, look, and I think it's called something like linking potential and, and field strength. So I'm in another video if you're interested in that. So anyway, let's move on. So if you want to know the potential energy of an object in a radial field, you need to multiply the two masses, that and the gravitational constant, and then divide just by the distance between the centers of masses. So it's not an inverse square ratio, it's just an inverse relationship. Now, you'd have seen potential energy before when you looked at unit two materials, so you're looking at the transfer of energy, but radial field is slightly different. Those calculations are assuming a uniform field. So anyway, this is your equation to calculate your potential energy. So why is this negative? Well, if you go a distance infinitely far away from an object, you're not in its field, so you're not experiencing a force. That means you have zero potential energy because you don't have the potential to move anywhere. So if you think as you come closer in, if we think about on Earth, essentially dropping an object is moving closer towards the center of mass of the Earth you're losing potential energy, so you must be going down from zero joules of potential energy, which means you must be negative. So in all these calculations, the negative sign is important, so it's not like before we looked at the magnitude. Sign is very important here. And then if we have the, the unit mass equivalent of this, it's called potential. So this is replacing the mass with a unit mass. And what you get, therefore, is these lines around here. These are called lines of equipotential or equal potential. So at the same, the same distance or radius from the center of mass, you're going to have points of equal potential, and you often see equipotential lines drawn like this. And in terms of calculating potential, it's done using this equation here. 
So again, just like before, let's have a look at an example that puts all of these things together. So the question says, calculate the work done to move a satellite of this mass to an altitude of this using this data. So the first key thing to think about is that work done is an energy. So if you're going to calculate the amount of work you either put in or get out, you need to calculate the change in energy, or the change in this case of potential energy. So that's the place to start. So work done is going to equal your change in potential energy. So that's going to be the final potential energy, or I'm going to call that EP2, minus your initial potential energy, which I'm going to call EP1 there. Let's think about how that is going to be calculated. It's going to be minus G M M over R2 minus minus G M M over R1. Which if we to do it like this, we can take the mass out, and that's just going to be the potential at 2 minus potential at 1, like this. So let's count. Let's do the maths on those. So V2 is going to calculate by doing minus G M over R. So let's so we have two. Let's put those numbers in there, which we get like this. So remembering at two, it's moved to an altitude. So that's why these two, the radius and the altitude, have been added together to give you a new radius here. And if we do the maths, I'm not going to round at this stage, but you get something along six joules per kilogram. Now if we do the same thing for V1, again going through exactly the same stages, let's put some numbers in, like this, so this time we've only got the Earth's radius in there because that was the starting point, point. and again if we do the numbers we get minus 6 point times 10 to the 7 joules per kilogram which you can see here is a much bigger negative number than this original one, which is what you'd expect, because it's closer to the center of mass. So then let's go back. So we're going our work done. Remember we were saying was M V2 minus V1, which we can see is 1.12 times 10 to the 3. And minus 0.9492 minus minus 6.282. That's going to be all multiplied by 10 to the 7, which gives you a work done of. 5.97 times 10 to the power of 10 joules. And that I've given to you three significant figures. I realize I'm using that a lot, but that's just because all the data here is the smallest number of significant figures is three significant figures. So that's why I've given an answer here to three significant figures. Just as before, if you want to see the stages in slightly neater typed out format, this is what we've got going on here, and this again got the same answer. So that's force, field strength, potential, potential energy, and work done, all for radial gravitational fields.